this September, a new school will open in Sligo, but without a typical curriculum or formal education. Instead, the children themselves will decide what they want to learn. Sligo Sudbury School is only the second democratic school in Ireland, following on from Wicklow Sudbury School, which opened in 2016. Joining us now to tell us more uh, about the work that they'll be doing there are Gail Nagel from Sligo Sudbury School, Julie Meehan, who is a parent moving from Slane to Sligo for the school, and Bernard Moran from Wicklow Sudbury School. Good morning to you all. I have to say, we, we, we are all utterly fascinated by uh, how this works. So could you explain, in, for those of us uh, who don't quite grasp the concept, simply what this is and how it's going to operate? Gail? Yes, well, um, this model of education, the Sudbury School, is part of a group of schools known as democratic schools. So in democratic schools, the children govern the school themselves essentially so they make the laws themselves that are appropriate for them in the community they amend them if they need to and they repeal them if they need to as well alongside that as well then they're free to um, follow their own pursuits and follow their own passions and learn what they feel they're most interested in learning so they're um, yeah so they're, they're learning how to be uh, self-autonomous self-directed individuals within a community setting and um, yeah, it's uh, and it's not just children in the school. Obviously, there are adults in the school as well. Yes, but yes. not teachers. They're not called teachers. The adults in the school are known as staff members, so they're there to safeguard the environment, to uh, support the children with anything that they need support with. And um, would they come from an educational background? I mean, were they former teachers or you know teachers who now decided they want to do it in a different way? They could be, but not necessarily. The most important element, I suppose, for staff members is that they're capable adults who can live in that community and can really support the children within that kind of a community. Um, it's, I suppose everybody in the community is, is a teacher. Children can be teaching each other. They'll be learning peer to peer. Um, so I suppose the word teacher then is used uh, just for the adults in the group because that hierarchy is... Is, there is um, no hierarchy. Yeah, that's the idea. Everybody yeah. is equal within the school. Absolutely. Bernard, you've been working in the school in Wicklow, the original Sudbury School in yeah. Ireland since 2016. So give us an idea. What does an average day look like? When do the kids start, for example? Okay, so it starts, at, it opens at half eight and it closes at five o'clock, similar to a normal school. Um, a lot of time people think, you know, what are they going to do? Are they just going to kind of laze around all day or, you know, how are they going to be motivated? But it's actually... Um, any given day you're going to re really see a very diverse um, set of different things going on so um, does everybody have to be there at 8 30 does everybody arrive at the same no, time no, um, and so finish at the same you time you have to arrive at half 10 um, by half 10 yeah and stay for five hours so we have people who are doing electronics we have people who are learning music we have book clubs there's all kinds of different activities going on across all different fields um, and are they really set on the day no, or are you just waiting so to see how the day develops? There, people are, are self-directing them. So what's really important is the principle that humans are natural learners, right? We have a passion to learn how we have survived all these millions of years otherwise, right? We're curious. Yeah, exactly. And the only way you lose that is when learning is seen as a chore. But when learning is seen for what it is, which is a side effect of doing things you're passionate about, everyone wants to learn, right? Um, so we really see learning as kind of, as the cliche goes, uh, the lighting of a fire rather than the filling of a bucket and the staff act as mentors within that to help people along. Is there homework? Are there assignments? Any tests? Um, so people set themselves their own assignments. That's another question people ask is, is there no structure? Are there no rules? There's actually a lot of structure and rules, but the community is responsible for them. So the kids have to make the rules and also to apply them. If one is unfair, we can vote to change it. And similarly, people people might actually structure their day a lot. People make timetables for themselves and stuff like that. So what that means is later on in life, when you go to college, when you go to the workplace, you have that initiative, you have that self-management that maybe if you spent your whole life just being told what to do all the time, when to do it, similar to traditional schools. Now, obviously, the Department of Education that. set down sort of particular rules and regulations mm -hmm. over the required amount of learning that every child in this country is set to attain, mm -hmm. usually that they can read, write, maths, and that there are certain exams that prove to the Department of Education that the children are reaching those goals, whether they're in a formal school setting or whether they're being homeschooled. Right. Is that going to happen then in Sudbury? Does that happen in Sudbury? So, so really, that's, that's kind of asking about the Leaving Cert and, and literacy. So as far as the Leaving Cert goes, people have the option to do the Leaving Cert. Uh, in other countries, there have been studies of Sudbury students who have taken their national exam and they score above the national average, so that's an option. I kind of fill a, a guidance counsellor role in the school sometimes, but usually I would tell people that you're better off to do a QQI if that's what you want, which is what 
used to be Fita because you can do something you're interested in. It's not as all-consuming as the leaving cert. You can have a better balance to your life and pursue other things. And then you can go down pretty much any route by doing QQI. Okay. And yet everyone becomes literate. Can I bring that, um, um, Julia? Julie, you, you are moving your family from Slane to Sligo for this. Which, not, like, they, you know, they say behind funerals, moving home is probably the second most stressful <laughs> thing you could do. You're moving home, family, everything, uprooting them for this. So this is obviously something that you're very passionate about. It is, yeah. Well, why? What, what, what's, what, what sparked that enthusiasm or, or that passion? I've always been really interested in education. My mum is a Montessori teacher and we had a Montessori school in the house. So I literally grew up immersed in child-centred education. So it's just that fire was lit in me when I was really young. And I've always been interested in exploring alternative models of education. And when we came across the democratic model, the Sunday school model, they really lit a fire in this. Said, this what do you not like right. about the traditional model of schooling? It's more, I'm more interested in this model than the traditional model. My sense is that while, you know, the, the educational system in this country is amazing, and I have such respect for educators, I truly do, um, the one size fits all doesn't fit all. Um, catering to a large group of children doesn't work for all children. Children learn at different times than when they're ready. And in this type of environment, the Sudbury School environment, they're allowed, that is elicited when they're ready. So if they want to learn reading, they can learn reading when they're ready, which might be at four, it might be at seven. Now you have a, you have a, a professional perspective on this as well, because you're a clinical psychologist. That's right. So therefore, obviously, the mind, how it operates, how it absorbs information and retains it or not, yeah. is all part and parcel of, of your professional life. Yeah. And it, so, so with somebody like you is doing this, it, it would seem to me there is implicit in in this move uh, an overt criticism of the, the the educational system as it stands. It's not good enough, or it's it's not what you want for your kids. Well, we all have personal choice, Mark, and that's something that um, I really believe in. So this is something that we're doing because we feel it's the right fit for us all as a family. So we're not doing it to overtly criticise any other model. We're doing it because we're naturally drawn to it. And we hope that by doing this, our children will be naturally drawn to whatever they wish to do. Did your children have a say in this? Yeah, well, we spoke to them about it and we let them know. And Are they in traditional school at the moment? My seven-year-old daughter is. So I have a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. Yeah, so she's in traditional school. And she has said, no, mum, I don't want to do that. I, I like where I am. I, I, I want to stay with my friends. I don't want to leave them. Well, we, we did speak about that as well, actually, because, you know, with the democratic model, it's about including everybody and everybody having a voice. So we spoke about that and um, we laid out the options as we saw them. And, you know, she said, well, I understand, of course, I'm going to miss my friends. She's she's happy in her school and we're very thankful for that in her previous school. Um, but she said, I understand and we, I really want to give this a go. In a school where everybody is equal, uh, where there are no students and teachers, what do you do then if there's any sort of a discipline issue? Because no matter how good children are and no matter how motivated they are to get involved and learn, there will always, I think, inevitably be discipline issues with children at some stage, whether they get bored or they don't want to take part or they're in bad humour or they fight among it's themselves. They learn. It's they just part of being a child. What do you do with that? Well, I suppose that the fact that there is no uh, top-down authority takes away some of the rebellion uh, for, for, for the most part at the beginning as well. And the school meeting then, the school meeting is the body that governs the school essentially. So every week or twice a week, the whole school community meet together. They talk about anything that might have come up during the week or, you know, during the previous days for the children. There's usually an agenda set. Um, so the, an open agenda may be uh, somewhere in the school and the children could come up with something that's bothering them. They can come up and write on the agenda what they want to be brought up in the meeting. So talk what happens if, let's just say, you're in a classroom, for want of a better word, you have two kids and they're having fisticuffs with each other, two seven-year-olds. Does the adult get involved or do they just let them scrap you're it out? Like, practically, yeah. does that really work? <laughs> so that happens very rarely. One of the beauties of Sudbury is that our, if you want to call it a disciplinary system, it's more of a conflict prevention system than conflict resolution system, although it fulfills both. So the way it's dealt with is, okay, I think there's been maybe one example of something like that. And obviously I would intervene as the adult there because, you know, you're responsible for the young people's safety. 
But after that, what happens is there's a thing called the Judicial Committee. So the next morning, uh, if someone wanted to write up a case against each other, we would sit around like this. And with an adult, at least one adult present, uh, the students handle it. So the two people involved would be there. You talk and, about it. Yeah, and there would be a jury of three of their peers. We talk about it. We talk about the best solution. And then we sort that out together. And that's actually, so the students run that. They organize that. They do the database for it. And they run a lot. They do the cleaning plan for the school, the rota. They're getting a lot it's of life skills. Very now. quickly, I want to check the funding issue here. This isn't funded by the Department of Education, so you have to pay for this yourself, is it? Mm -hmm. The adults who want to send their children yeah. to the school? Yeah. So what are we talking? How much is it going to take to run so the organization? It, like it depends. Each school has kind of, each school chooses a, their own kind of way to, to um, figure out a fee structure. Our, we've chosen to do a cost sharing basis. So basically, we'll be dividing quite literally the cost of the school by all the families that are coming to so the school. So the more people you get, the, the easier you Yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit of a numbers game. Are right. the adults all volunteering? Sorry, Mark. At yeah. the beginning, we've all been volunteering so far, and we have myself and Maura, my co-founder in Sligo, are, have offered to volunteer again for another year um, to get the school up and running. And in a lot of Sudbury schools, the staff do volunteer. Yeah. So that keeps costs down? That keeps costs down, yeah. All right, well, it's very, very interesting to have to see. Yeah, yeah, it does. I think we'll have to get our cameras out to the Sudbury School one of these days to you see it in operation. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Thank you for joining us. So we're going to take a break now. Um, we missed our talking point this morning, so do let us know your thoughts on this. Uh, 53131, as always, to get in touch. Join us for lots more every day. Very short.